Hey, what's up, guys? A warm welcome in my channel, The Learning Destination. I'm your host, Avinas, and today's topic is episode 01 Deployment of Bold. And this is my ongoing series, Hasikor Bold. So let's quickly understand that today's agenda. The agenda is very simple. Today we are going to see how we can deploy the port. So from episode one to seven, which I have already covered. And as you can see on my screen, like there are many topics which I have already covered uh, in my last seven episodes. So those who haven't yet watched can see, can go to my channel and there is a playlist Hasik or Volt and can pick all those episodes from there and watch and learn it. However, it is not mandatory. If you have basic idea, you can start from any one of episode. So now let's get back on the topic. So today's topic is deployment bolt. And again, I have split it into two sections, section one, where I was I'm going to talk about the configurations of the file. Then I'm going to explain that what are the parameters in the configurations file. Then after that, what kind of storage we are using inside the Vault deployment. And finally, we will start the Vault server. In section two, we are going to deal with the how we can unseal the keys. And finally, how we can authenticate with the root token keys. And the last, we clean up everything. So now, the, now we are going to understand that how the configuration file is written. So let's start. Hey guys, so before starting the practical session, as you know that I always go through some theoretical explanations and now I'm going to explain you about the configuration file. So on my screen, you can see that there are several sections which is defined under the configuration file stories, listener, disable mlock, API address, cluster address, and finally user interface, which is the true, right? So we are going to understand one by one, what does it mean? But before that, let me explain you one thing. If you have already watched my episode number 02, where I have already installed the Vault server, and then I have started the Vault server. So you notice that there, I have started the Vault server in the dev environment. So as long as you are just testing purpose, you are running some command, dev environment is okay. You can start the Vault server into the dev environment. But when it comes about the SIT, UAT or the productions and you want to configure the board server yourself, then there are several designs you need to point out, you need to configure yourself. And that's how that this is the target of this particular sessions that I'm going to explain you that how you can do your own configuration and start the world server and that is why we need this configurations file and now we are going to understand it one by one so basically the storage sections here we have taken the raft however in our testing i'm going to take it as like simply the file storage the path is given whole data it means that whatever the secret we are providing it is getting stored under this particular path then this is the node one ID. It means that if you are running your Vault server into the cluster, it means that there is a uh, three node inside your Vault cluster, right? Your node ID will be node one. Then listener TCP. And here I have allowed all the IPs. However, it highly recommended that you can put your own uh, particular load balancer IP if you are running into the cluster mode. If it is a single node cluster, then you can put the specific IP address and make sure that this particular port number 8200 and 8201 should be open in your security group. Okay, so now let's understand one by one what does it mean. So in first section storage, this is the physical backend that Volt uses for storage and storage for what purpose? Storing the secret inside that. Okay, then listener, one or more listener determine how Volt listen for API request, right? Whatever the command we are uh, sending to the Volt server, right? It takes as a API request and that it passes through this particular IP address, right? Next API address specifies the address to advertise to route client request. Then M block. Mlock, those who are from the Linux background, they uh, they know very well, right? The Mlock and Mlock all system calls tell the system to lock to a specified memory range and to not allow that memory to be paced. Okay, then cluster address. However, let me point one more thing. So whenever we start the uh, board server into the dev environment board, it uses everything it stores under the memory. However, 
here when you uh, yourself when you deploy the vault server the vault uses the specific storage as i mentioned here here is the raft however in our uh, particular testing we are going to use the file system okay then this is the cluster address so basically the cluster address indicates the address and the port to be used for communication between the vault nodes in a cluster so this is the short brief about the configuration file and i hope now your understanding is pretty much clear on the configuration file parameter now let's see that how practically we can start and configure this configuration file okay guys so now let's get back on the practical session so firstly we are going to create some directory which we are going to use as a storage so we are making here we are on the root path we are making here uh vault directory and the data directory let's see okay okay so we have vault and data both the directory is ready now we will go inside this directory and we'll create the configuration file and we call it this configuration file config.scl then what the things need to be mentioned here i have already ready it okay so it's a very simple like in storage and as earlier i mentioned i am going to use storage as a file not as a raft so i say file because raft availability i don't have as of now the raft storage availability that's that's the reason that i am using storage as a file as of now and i'm going to just make it here if you are running on particular ec2 node or if your cluster is behind the load balancer so you can put here the load balancer ip or a specific ec2 instance id however i am going to allow just for all the ips okay one more thing guys i would like to highlight this tls disable as of now i made it true but in productions it should be false you should not block the you should not disable the tls it's not good practice in production so just make a note on tls disable then i'm going to put the ip 000 then here also 000000 okay let's save it now we start the command is vault server right and earlier when we were starting what we are we were giving dave but here we are using this configuration so we need to give config equal the file okay so now the server is started what we need to do now we need to take one more duplicate sessions of the same storage and we call it ubuntu because this is my this my machine is ubuntu based machine all right and now we need to export the address so so we can export it like that here you can put 00 or a specific load balancer ip i mean whatever whatever is your tcp listener ip you can mention here so since i have already given the 0.0, .0 it means i allow all the ips that's why even i can take this local host ip address as well now we need to start the initialize the operator so the command is volt operate init okay so i am missing something volt operator so the command is actual command is volt operator in it let me show you so here you can check the command i have run volt operator in it now the moment when you run this command what you are getting is unseal keys so by default whenever you start the a vault server it is the sealed state it is in the sealed state so in order to use the vault server we need to unseal it and that's why it has given the keys so in the next section it means the section 
this is what we are going to see that how we can install uh, how we can unseal the world server so here the keys has given one to five however if you read this line particular right so volt initialize with five key shares and a key threshold value what is the key threshold value is three it means that there is a one command which i am going to show you and only the threshold value is three it means that once we utilize only the three values one keys two keys and the three keys right after that we can unseal it right and that is what the meaning of threshold of two it means that once you utilize the three keys the your world server will be completely unsealed and then you can fully utilize it and that is what we are going to see in the section two so let's start the section two Okay guys, so now I am going to take again the duplicate sessions of the same machine. In order to run the command, I need to export the same again, this address. Now, by default it is a seal. So we need to unseal it and then command is volt operator unseal. So it is asking for unseal key. So we will take one key from here. And you can utilize this key only once. You cannot utilize the same key twice, right? One more thing you need to mention that, so here, unseal progress, so one we have already used, right, that is what written out of three, it means two is more remaining, and then you see the status is sealed true, it should be false, the moment it becomes the false, and we are going to see that when we, we will use only three keys, right, this sealed status is going to be a change into the false. And that's how that we can determine that our world server is now completely unsealed and we can use it. Now let's take another session. So in such a way, we are going to use total three sessions. This, the command will be the same. And let's quickly copy the command, it will be faster. And now we are going to use the second keys, this one. So now you see, we have used two keys. It was the number two, and then it's still the same status is true. And the moment we are using the third keys, it will become the false. Let's take another session. Duplicate sessions. I hope you are enjoying my sessions because once your concept is clear, you are never going to forget it. And I hope I am explaining the concept in a very easy way and you are completely understanding it. If you think that I am bringing some valuable lessons for your skills, then please subscribe my channel. And if you have any questions, right, you can write me in the comment sections as well. So now we are going to use the third keys, this one. So now you see, we have used three threshold value. This threshold value was three, right? Here three, we have used already three keys here. Finally, threshold value, it reaches to three. And now you see, still the status is false. It means it completely now unsealed and we can use this world server. So now we can authenticate as the initial root token. So the command is bolt login and then we can take it the token which we have generated earlier 
we can utilize this token here. So now we have successfully authenticated with root token. And here you can see that the policies, root token policies, we have already used. Those who are not aware how the policies work in the word section, so they can watch my previous uh, episode number uh, 07, where I have clearly explained how word policies can be made and how it is applied. Okay guys, so so far now we have seen that how to create the configurations file for word server. We have also understood the different parameter which are defined inside the configuration file. Finally, we have started our word server and then we have seen that the moment when we start the word server, it is under the sealed state. We got to know about the different keys which helps us to unseal the world server. And finally, we have clean up everything. So in my upcoming topic, I'm going to cover the episode number 01 and the topic will be using the HTTP API with authentication. So don't miss it. It is again going to be a very knowledgeable and very informative session. So that's all for this lecture, guys. I hope you really enjoy my this tutorial. And somehow, if you are thinking that I am bringing some valuable lessons, which is enhancing your DevOps skill, then please subscribe my channel. If you have any questions, you can write me in the comment sections and I will answer it there. So stay tuned with the learning destinations and don't miss my next episode number 09. Any, if you have any queries, write me in the comment section. Once again, thank you so much for watching this and I will meet you in my next episode 09. Till that time, bye-bye. Thank you so much for watching it. Take care.